On Monday, June 8, 1970, Abraham Harold Maslow was outdoors by the poolside of his home in Menlo Park, California. Following his cardiologist's orders, Maslow noted the time on his stopwatch and began to jog slowly in place. His wife, Bertha, was relaxing a few feet away. Suddenly, Maslow collapsed without a sound. By the time his wife rushed to his side, he was already dead of a massive heart attack. Maslow was 62 years old at the time, a distinguished psychologist and key theoretician of humanistic and transpersonal psychology, still in the midst of a productive career. When I first read that paragraph, I was floored. The famous Abraham Maslow, the creator of the hierarchy of needs, had lived only a few miles away in Menlo Park. I was instantly curious about this house, where he lived, and the pool where he died. Anything I could find online only mentioned Menlo Park, nothing more specific. With some digging, I managed to find a phone book from 1970 that listed Dr. A. Maslow, one Saga Lane. Today, there is no Saga Lane in Menlo Park. There's a Saga Way, but it's a cluster of office buildings. I drove around but found no clues. I wrote the local historian, and he sent me an original development plan with Saga Lane as the street name. The office park belonged to the Saga Corporation, a huge company with 50,000 employees. They ran the cafeterias at universities throughout the country. They credited their success to the innovation of unlimited seconds. The CEO of Saga offered Maslow a job. Come hang out. Research whatever you want. Just be a kind of resident sage and have lunch with me and the leadership on occasion. Maslow was recovering from a heart attack in 1968, one so severe it had almost killed him. He got the invitation from Saga, decided to end his decades of teaching on the East Coast, and moved to California. He wrote about this period, after his first heart attack, restarting in California, as his post-mortem life. He felt profoundly grateful to have this time. It was a bonus. He felt a kind of beauty in everything. He and his wife Bertha came out early in 1969, After renting for a few months, they bought a house in a small Menlo Park community called Ladera. It's only about 500 homes. Given Ladera is so small, the local historian Bo suggested using Google Maps to find all the properties with pools and maybe dig deeper from there. So I did that. There are about 50 pools. I took those addresses and looked through all the ownership records going back through the 60s. But no luck. No Maslow's. I also emailed a few authors that had written about Maslow to see if anyone had any record of the address. Like me, they had been curious about it, but they had never managed to find a clue. One biographer noted that Maslow had built the pool in their backyard, an unusual indulgence for them. I managed to find an architectural archive at Berkeley that included building plans for an Abe Maslow in 1969. The architect, Jack Stafford, was well-known and Berkeley had his records. I emailed the archive to see if there was a street address on the plan, and I got an auto-reply. The pandemic had left them understaffed, and I should temper my expectations for any quick reply. I had one friend who lived in the Ladera, Colleen, so I asked her. She checked around the neighborhood and didn't come up with anything. Realize that 1970 was 50 years ago, so we need to find people today who are at least 70 years old. Even then, they would have been in their 20s, while the Maslows were already in their 60s. Three months later, in May, I mentioned Maslow's pool to another friend, Steve. He said, I have an architect friend, Libby, who lives in Ladera. I bet she'll be interested. Libby quickly replied with the following email. Before I got my degree in architecture, I graduated with an undergraduate degree in psychology, so I'm slightly familiar with Maslow. Also, my uncle used to work for Saga back in the day. 
I did a quick search on our Ladera listserv to see if Maslow was part of any recent neighbor chatter, but that didn't yield anything. I might reach out to Lenny, who is super connected in the neighborhood and kind of a resident historian. I'll let you know what I find out, because now I'm curious too. She reached out to Lenny and a woman, Diane, who runs the Ladera Recreation District. She wrote back, I have now reviewed every Lerdera directory from 1956 to 1975, and there are no Maslows listed in the directory. When they lived here, they must have chosen not to be in it. If you want, you can also try contacting John M., who lived on Aliso Way until recently. His memory is really sharp, and he might know where they lived. I'm guessing it might be 220 Erica Way, where Leslie and I live now. Also, Betty lives on Erica Way, and she lived there in 1969. So I emailed those people. They had no memory of the Maslows, and Betty said she was sure they did not live at 220 Erica Way. She knew all the former residents of that house. But Lenny wrote back the next day. The mystery of Abe Maslow's house is solved. Carol Kay, copied here, knew him and was a visitor at the house at 855 La Mesa. Eric, if you contact Carol directly, she can fill you in on what she remembers of the house, which was subsequently torn down, and the present house is currently for sale at $5 million. Instead of sending Linda and Di on a wild goose chase, I should have just posted a query on the Ladera listserv. I emailed Carol, and she wrote, The current modern house is on the property where Abe's house once stood. It was a very different type of architecture, quite lovely. I was part of a group of women who met there weekly for a while. Bertha Maslow was a member of that group. Sometimes Abe attended. Bertha was a sculptor, an amazing couple. And then she followed up. I wish I could recall more about Abe and Bertha. They were both lovely, kind people. She was very much her own person, and the young women in the group appreciated that. Then I contacted the property's real estate broker, Michael Dreyfus. He was very familiar with Maslow, but didn't know that he had lived in the house. He also noted that when he trains his agents, he references Maslow's hierarchy, since people are buying high-end houses for something other than basic shelter. The next Sunday, I drove up into the hills of Ladera. I walked through the front door, looked through the open kitchen, and there it was. Maslow's Pool. Six months since I first read the article, I was now standing on the deck where Abe and Bertha had been almost exactly 52 years before. Two days later, I received an email from Berkeley with an image of the blueprints. There was the same address, the same pool, and Abe's name written in the corner. 